Hi everybody, welcome to Coffee to Your Sex. I'm Karina Velasco and today we're going to talk about a very important topic that it's one of the tools or one of the things we need to thrive in life because uh, it activates our oxytocin, it makes us feel connected, intimacy, and that's the art of touch. And we have a very special guest, a dear friend, um, massage therapist, you travel around the world, teaching people how to touch, conscious sensuality, uh, meditation, energy, yoga. So amazing, amazing array of skills. So Robert Silver, welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Karina. It's super sweet being here with you and everybody. Yeah, and we're talking about something important because, okay, I have to be really clear. Most of the people have no idea how to touch. And if it's not in the context of sexuality, mm -hmm. then they have like this kind of issue just to be sensual with someone. So how important is for us to let go of that idea that touch is connected to sexuality, which it is, but you can use also touch as nourishing, as friendship, as connection. So what do you think about that? Oh, well, I think it's absolutely true. I mean, most people, uh, from my experience, and I do travel around the world teaching workshops in, in many different cultures around the world, um, there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of fear and anxiety around touch. Um, are, we, are we touching properly? Um, does the person like our touch? Um, you know, then when we start to move into more sensual, erotic, or sexual space, you know, we, we think we're supposed to be this, um, this master at, at, you know, at giving pleasurable touch, yet many of us don't really have basic skills. Um, and the first skill really is being in the present moment. If you're in your ease, if you're relaxed, if you're in your heart and you're joyfully giving touch, most likely, even if you are not a massage therapist, or you're trained in any particular type of touch, if you're in the present moment and you're coming from your heart, you're gonna give beautiful touch. And that's important you mentioned because a lot of people, like you say, they go to, to the heads and they're like, oh, I'm going to do this skill. I'm going to do this something new. It's, it, it's, it's sort of like, um, how, do, how, how could I say it? Like you feel very stressed out because you need to show off or you need to make things perfect or learn a technique. It, it becomes very technical. So how can we allow ourselves to be in the present moment and get out of our heads? Mm. Yeah, well, so the first step I would say um, is learning practices like yoga and meditation that bring us into connection with our body, that bring us into connection with what's happening emotionally. Because if, if we're unaware, if we're unconscious of our emotions, um, that's going to impact uh, our whole being, our whole energy field, and it's certainly going to impact how, how people experience us. So emotion is translated to our hands. Oh, if someone touches me and they're not present or they're feeling some level of anxiety, I can feel it immediately. And I think actually most people can tell something's off. So, you know, that's why I'd say before we even engage in touch with another person, we want to connect with ourselves. We want to bring ourselves into the present moment. And that's actually a big part of the courses that I'm teaching around the world, um, how to bring yourself into the present moment before you even uh, start to make a connection with another person. And also boundary, because sometimes we feel like we want to touch somebody. How can we learn what that boundary is? Like to what extent I can touch somebody with which intention I can touch somebody without like being weird or creepy for the other person. Right. Well, <clears throat> one of the most important things is establishing an open line of communication verbally. Um, and a lot of people say, oh, you know, it's not going to be one of those workshops where he's like, we have to ask permission for everything and we have to do everything so politically correct. And that's so boring. And, and, it's, and it's like it's going to get in the way of like a spontaneous, fun, sexy interaction with someone. It doesn't have to. So there's some really simple things 
we can do. And one of them is we can communicate and say, will you tell me um, if, if you don't like um, the way that I'm touching you? Or will you tell me what you like? Just in a conversation. So it doesn't have to be so formal and uptight. Um, but if you really trust that someone will communicate their truth, then you don't have to worry about are they liking this or not. I mean, and that's a huge step because usually we don't have that type of conversation because we're afraid of validation or rejection or that's going to lack romance or spontaneity. So how can we, you know, start that conversation and let go of everything and, and just like noticing that it's natural to talk about these things, mm -hmm. that it's not it's, it's not going to take it out, like all that romance or, or all that, you know, like erotica. Like we can talk. Right. Okay. So let's do it. Let's do, there's two different ways I would say to do this. One let's is with the verbal communication. Okay. And the other one is with a nonverbal communication. Okay. And most people are probably going to be more comfortable with a nonverbal because that's sort of what our training usually is around touch, intimacy, sexuality. If you approach someone and you start touching them, the first thing you should do is pause. And I like to, when we're teaching the touch, touch workshops, um, I like to say P-A-U-S-E, not P-A-W-S. Pause, not pause. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. okay. And so what that means is when we make an initial contact, we just pause there. We let that energy of that contact, that physical contact, become absorbed and integrated for the person to really feel like, oh, do I want this or do I not want this? So like if you were to give me your hand, would you like to give me your hand? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's true. Like not, right now. Yeah. Yeah, like, but I'm beginning to feel really the contact before you go into something else. Like it's, it's making me feel kind of safe, like just to be here. Right. And I can put my other hand on top. Take a deep breath. Oh. It conveys confidence. It's not so much doing something, it's being. And if we want to make a connection with another person, if we want to have really good sex, if we want to have you know, a really open-hearted connection with someone, it means actually just resting. And so I like to think of it as, you know, if I'm touching someone, it's just as if I'm playing an instrument and we're playing music. Music is only music if there are spaces in between the notes. That's beautiful. And one note, like I don't know if you, if you like classic rock, but like I love Neil Young. Neil Young, one note, amazing. Just one note. But he's totally present with it and it's a very strong note and the, the personality and the presence is conveyed through that one note. Or Miles Davis blowing a trumpet, one note and it's like boom. You're in a totally different reality. Yeah, and I feel that even right now because that space or that pause allowed me to feel the temperature, the sensations in my body, how is the connection feeling, feeling safe, confident, and then maybe you could touch like other parts of my arms and right. it wouldn't feel invasive. Right. So what we might do is we might have that contact and then some eye contact, some breathing, Pause, breathe, feel, and then if necessary, verbally communicate. So I might just say, how does that feel? And then I can just share what I just did. Right. It's feeling exactly. good, I, will, I feel your warmth, or maybe, you know, can you have a lighter touch? Yeah, without, without being, you know, a little too high maintenance and telling me every step of the way, because a little surprise is Oh, really? Good. But if, if I can trust that you'll speak your truth, so when I'm working with students and clients, um, I like to say the three things that I'm looking for are knowing your body, 
your sensations, what's, what's actually happening in your physical body, knowing your emotions, and being able to speak your truth. Um, once someone has those three lev levels, knowing your body, your emotions, and being able to speak your truth, then we can actually make a connection with another person. Okay, let's start with knowing our bodies, because a lot of people, you know, we, we don't really get into our bodies. That's why we love exercising or yoga, because it allows us to understand and see what's going on in our bodies. So also the, the idea of like personal touch, like usually we don't touch ourselves. So for me, my question is how like something else is going to feel good if I don't know even what feels good in my body, how I'm going to be able to communicate that if I don't explore that in my body. But then there's this idea that it's going to be feel weird, like me touching myself, you know, like, oh, yeah, like I'm crazy. Well, so, women, are, women are given a lot more license in our culture yeah. to touch themselves and enjoy sensual pleasure than, than men are, right? <laughs> I mean, men are we're just supposed to be like rock hard, tough. We're not supposed to like be sensual. We're supposed to be more sexual. And, and uh, yeah, by actually relaxing the body, then we're in the parasympathetic nervous system. Now all our receptors in our body are capable of receiving in that sensory data information. And the first step is really to bring ourselves into that state of relaxation. And I'll just put it out there. Um, if we're using drugs or alcohol to bring ourselves into relaxation, then we're actually cutting off our sensory awareness um, at certain levels. Now, certainly having a glass of wine with a lover or if you're doing you know, something else that will expand your consciousness, I'm not opposed to that. But when you first make a connection with another person, it's really good um, to be in a state of relaxation without any other substances. Um, and if you try that, uh, people may be surprised that they're going to have different experiences. Yeah, because usually, you know, when we want to touch somebody else, like in this context, like of attraction, it's like I go to a bar, have a couple of drinks, so she relaxes or I relax or, you know, I get him drunk or I get her drunk and then I just like can touch her like all over. But like then the thing is you don't even remember and your body is asleep. Right. So why do you want to do that? Well, it's, it's because, time to shift. Yeah, it's because people want connection. They want safety. They want love. They want pleasure. They want connection. But we're afraid. So if we can do some things like creating these agreements around touch. One of the other things that I, one of the other concepts that I like to use in my work is uh, called levels of intimacy. And the pause comes in here. So if I can identify every different level of intimacy, like right now we're sitting here talking, we have our clothes on, we're not touching, okay? But we're close. So there's a certain level of intimacy that's happening. Now, if I put out my hand and you put your hand in my hand. Oh, I'll put this. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Now we got a deeper level of intimacy. Hmm. And I've noticed you're breathing. Like when you pause, like you really are conscious about your breath. So breathing is also an important tool, like to bring you into Absolutely. more intimacy. So yeah, take at least two or three deep breaths at each level of intimacy. Mm -hmm. And then if we were to go further and I would touch you, you know, in just different parts of your body, I might just let my hand rest on the back of your heart or I might hold you. Or, you know, we might come into closer physical contact. Then I'd pause again. And it's a chance to feel what's actually happening and then communicate that. And a lot of times people are afraid, oh my gosh, if I pause, something's wrong. Or, you know, if I'm a guy and I want to make love with this woman, if, if I give her too much space, she might change her mind. So I got to, like, move forward as fast as possible so she doesn't really have a chance to say no. And then what ends up happening is people go further than what they can actually integrate into their bodies, into their emotions. And then later there's a separation. You know, we, we, it's, people know they hook up, they make love with someone, and then later it's like, oh, I wasn't really present. I don't really want to see them. It feels a little weird and awkward. It's because you went past what you could integrate in terms of a level of intimacy with this person. Mm, 
and I think that's a, that's a huge thing, like you say, uh, pausing and and integrating, which means like I'm really knowing what's going on in my body, in my emotions, in in, in my energy, and that it's going to give you sort of like a radar if you want to go further in the connection or not. Absolutely. Like if if the, if this doesn't feel comfortable, why go to the next level, right? Well, if you can't absorb the energy, and again, some people may think, "Oh, this is woo woo." We're talking about energy. What are we talking about energy? If if it's not feeling pleasurable and you can't really integrate it, then moving into a more intimate erotic or sexual space with someone is actually more psychologically driven than than what's actually nourishing to your whole being. And, you know, this is the thing. A lot of people, their sex has been, been conditioned actually as an emotional release technique as opposed to as a means for um, creating love and trust and intimacy and communion with another person. It's being used just to throw off energy and release emotions. And, of course, if we're doing that when we're having sex, we're actually distancing ourselves from that other person. You might have a really sharp peak cathartic orgasm where you might have several of them you'd be like, oh my god it was so intense it was so amazing but later you're just like i don't really feel that connected to that person even though i had this very strong intense sexual experience mm. so talking about that intention i guess is pretty important right like what kind of touch i want to give because sometimes i wouldn't touch you the way i touch for example my nephew right or the way I would touch my mom. Like there's many different ways to touch. So can you tell us a little bit about the difference and, and the importance of sure. intention for that? Sure, and sometimes uh, we do rituals where we meditate, we use different archetypal movements in terms of clearing the energy field and the emotional body to bring ourselves in the present moment. And then we'll um, speak intentions. You can eye gaze with someone and you can say, my intention um, with you right now is to feel safe, to feel connected to my body, to give and receive pleasure with you. Um, that's maybe a different intention than saying like, oh, my intention um, is to, um, to give you a therapeutic massage. Or my intention um, around uh, just creating relaxation may be different than an intention around arousal. And, ar and around, you know, a particular sensual or sexual exploration that we could have. But what happens if I have clarity, let's, let's say, like, uh, I want to touch you because I want to feel safe or connected or even like I need some oxytocin, you know? Because <laughs> sometimes it's like, yeah, I need a hug. I need oxytocin. That's what I really want. Right. But like, let's say we're hugging and I want that oxytocin, but suddenly I start to feel aroused. Am I allowed to change my mind or like what happens like if I'm hugging a guy who's like, oh, yeah, I just want nourishment. I want to cuddle and then I feel an erection and then I'm like, oh, this is so weird. Like those cases happen. Like sure. wh what do we do about it? Well, the great thing about erections is you don't actually have to do anything about it. And a lot of women say, oh, my God, really? what do I do? What do I do? I'm obligated somehow to do something. Um, so you know. if you have an erection, that doesn't mean I have to have sex with you being as a guy, like a guy? It's amazing, you know, how many women feel like, oh, I don't want to make any type of connection where he might feel turned on or aroused or, because I really don't want to be sexual. And so I just totally pull back from intimacy or even sensuality. And, and yeah, you could have a hug or cuddle. And if erotic energy flows, you just let it flow through you. And then you go like, hmm, I'm noticing there's energy there. And breathing it, feeling it, and then communicating it without any shame because it's just, it's totally natural, wonderful part of being alive. Well, I ask you because recently I went to this hogging meditation, right? <laughs> so I'm, I'm at this hogging meditation and suddenly, you know, like there were like eight guys, so you have to go around the clock, like hugging each guy. And it was like erection a, and another erection. Slut. God, what? I can't believe that. You're such a hug slut. Yeah, I know. And another another erection. And I was like, hey, this is a hugging meditation. How come guys are having an erection? Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't get it. And for a moment, I felt like a little uncomfortable. Like, oh, my God. Like, I just wanted a hug. Well, most people are so touch starved. And neurologically, we're, we become wired to associate any form of touch or sensuality, intimacy, with, with sexuality. 
And it just goes to show how much people are touch starved. So if you can just say, oh, well, that's great. He has an erection, he's, he's aroused. It's simply physiological. Um, and that if we actually stay with it and we relax into it, we can just stay present with ourselves and with another person and let them have whatever energy or experience they're having um, without having to do anything about it. So I guess it's the same for women, right? I can be like really turned on, but that doesn't mean I have to do anything about it. Yeah, absolutely. It's just that it's not as visible as like a man's erection, right? I know, and I mean, yeah, women have various physical uh, symptoms of arousal, but not quite as strong usually as men. So um, you, you mentioned a word that really, you know, I resonated with, which is like, starved touch mm. so how can we shift that how can we create in our everyday life that type of connection to get a hug to get someone to hold your hand because i know like there's a lot of widows for example that they don't want to be romantically involved with anybody else because they love their husbands but then they don't allow even like touch with anybody and, and, and I can see that, you know, there, there's something even in the posture of the body, like this certain sadness, because that's a part of like for survival, the nourishing aspect of yeah. touch. Yeah. It's absolutely crucial that everyone uh, receive physical touch. I mean, we all know, you know, babies who get separated from their mother and don't receive touch can die just from not having physical contact. So we all need physical contact. And if we're empowered enough to be able to ask for what we want and to be able to set our boundaries, then we can receive touch. And if someone gets aroused and said, oh, my God, you're so beautiful. I love you. I want to, you know, live the rest of my life with you. And it's like, gosh, we just met this evening. And they're like, maybe you're a little needy and codependent. How about we just rest and have a hug here? You don't have to push the person away. You can just be like, wow, we all really want... I mean, there are people now that are cuddle therapists. Oh, yeah, I was going to tell you that. I mean, I've never actually hired a cuddle ter therapist, but I've been to cuddle parties, and I love it because you're just there cuddling for hours with people you don't even know. Yeah, <laughs> and you have your clothes on. Yeah. There's no genital contact. Someone might feel erotic energy, but if you keep breathing, eventually that energy will get absorbed. And that's when we, we'll talk about the, uh, the tantric lovemaking wave. It's about getting out of this idea of arousal, stimulation, sharp peak orgasm, and then there's just sort of unconscious relaxation. There's a totally different uh, tantric waveform of, of how energy can flow. And the touch. And the touch. So, so the cuddlers are getting pretty popular, right? <laughs> Well, you know, a lot, of, uh, a lot of sex workers actually report that what a lot of men actually really want, they'll spend most of the session with a man actually just cuddling and holding him because we're, as men, we don't receive, usually, if we're heterosexually inclined, most men don't receive a lot of good physical nourishing contact from other men. And so then from other women, they can only receive sexual touch. And if they're not receiving the sexual touch, they're not There's really no receiving touch. any touch. Oh, that's sad. Well, and, and then important. it makes them so dependent on trying to find a lover. And then, you know, it puts a lot of pressure on it. When we could just say, hey, I got friends. Let's have a hug. Let's have a cuddle. Yeah, I have a friend who our thing is we watch a good movie and we just cuddle. And then he leaves. And that's all we do. You know, so it's beautiful because you nourish that, you're watching a movie, you're having a good time, and then you feel fulfilled in a way. Yeah. So, okay, this, I, I know you're the expert on this, so please guys, you have to listen to this. You're talking about like presence and the pause and the breathing, which I think it's absolutely fabulous, but what about touching a woman's clitoris and vagina? Like, I've noticed a lot of men, they just go directly and they go like, boom, 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 boom. And you're like, what? <laughs> What's happening? Well, so, we've, we've yeah. We've got a whole generation of men that have been trained from watching uh, porn. Oh, that's a thing. Right? Okay. Don't do that, please. <laughs> Take your time. Can you guide them through how to touch the clit and, and the vagina? We just went really quickly from your hand now to your clitoris. Yeah. So there's a lot in between. So again, levels of, uh, of intimacy, um, I would say we want to start with the hand and then we're moving up the arm 
and then maybe we're going to pause when the hand gets to the heart. So many women said, oh my gosh, this man just put a hand on my heart. He didn't just try to like grab my breasts and tweak my nipples or do something. He just put a hand, let his hand rest on my heart while he gazed oh, yeah, into that my feels eyes. Amazing. And it's just like, oh, he's present with me. He's not just like trying to touch my breasts, you know? And it's like later then when we want to touch the breasts, we do so with a relaxed, open hand and we connect the breast in with the whole body. And so it's a totally different experience than touching intentionally for stimulation. Yeah, like going like this. If our intention is more around relaxation and connection, then we allow for natural erotic energy to flow after we're relaxed and connected. And ideally, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take an hour or two. It's not just, oh, we're sitting on the couch, we're watching a movie, and all of a sudden it's like, hey, movie's almost over. Make your move. And it's like it's kissing, yeah. kissing and fondling and like trying to get someone really turned on. It's like that stuff doesn't work. But you say one hour or two. Like seriously, how many people have one, two, or three hours for lovemaking? Well, a movie is 90 minutes long, right? If you're having a good lovemaking session, it should be at least 90 minutes long. That's true. So instead of watching the movie, how about we pay attention to ourselves and each other, make some eye contact, really drop in and connect, and you go like, oh my God, that would be just too intimate. And it's like, if the, one, if the personal intimacy is too great to eye gaze with someone, why are you having sex with them? If you can't just breathe and eye gaze with someone for like 20 seconds because you think something weird's gonna happen, yeah. why are you taking your clothes off and actually having sex with this person? Yeah, because there's this, also this myth around like this is intimate to gaze at each other, but the having sex, oh, it's casual, I can just go and, you know, right. there's not gonna be anything awakening, like any right. emotions. Right. So going back to the clit, I'm very interested about that because you're the expert and like you guys need to listen to this. So you say it, it's, it's like a foreplay. It's like connecting the different parts of your body, breathing, mm -hmm. pausing. And then what happens when you get there? You don't right. go like, pause, no. pause. Pause, not pause. Yeah, okay. exactly. And it's the same thing with the clit. Um, and we do some genital massage workshops as well. But before we get there, I like to really connect in with the whole body uh, of the person that I'm working with. And from the pause, then I like to move into some very light touch. I like to call it airbrushing. You can use your hands, your What's fingertips. Airbrushing? Can you airbrushing? Oh, this feels really very nice. light, fluid touch. Yeah. You can use your breath. Ooh. <laughs> Either with pursed lips for a cool breath or an open mouth for warm breath. You can even use your hair. You have beautiful long hair. I, that's why I started growing out my hair. Yeah. So, you know, we can use the whole body as a canvas to create a beautiful artistic experience. So we're, using, we're doing the airbrushing. Okay, that's step two. And then you think, oh my gosh, they're aroused. Her nipples are perky. Like, it's a go. Let's be on it. No, actually, that's the point to pause again. It's like, oh no, shoot, he's telling me to pause again. Yeah, and then that's where we can go into deep stretching, twisting, even shaking the body and releasing more tension. That way then when we go into the next step, which maybe we're gonna use some nice massage oil, now we're going into a deeper level of touch, really relaxed hands that, oh, there's some, someone putting some massage oil on someone. And then we're gonna use not just our fingers, but we're gonna use our palm and our arm. I teach Lomi Lomi Hawaiian massage. Oh yeah, I've, yeah, you gave me a session once of Lomi Lomi, that was, that's amazing. But what you're saying is incorporating massage into our love making or like foreplay, right? Well, absolutely. Because usually like if you want a massage, like you go pay a therapist, go to a spa, lay on the bed, had some like shiatsu, you know, like not sensual, and then you go home. There's no other ways to have massage. Well, in, in my way of thinking, really, really beautiful lovemaking is incorporating meditation. It's incorporating yoga. It's incorporating massage, communication, like. verbal communication. <laughs> 
So then when we get to the point of intercourse, we're deeply connected to ourselves and our partner. We've connected in with the whole body. The whole body's relaxed and open and present. And we can really, you know, reach a much deeper level of pleasure. Um, so, you know, there are these steps that create this tantric waveform of orgasm that we teach in the conscious sensuality uh, workshops and courses. Okay, so we're almost done with the show. Just to be clear, so the first step would be to be present in the moment, not washing your dishes or your car in your mind or fantasizing even, right? Like being with a person. Well, and if you have a fantasy, you might think, oh my God, I'm not supposed to fantasize about another person, but it can create a lot of trust if you said, oh my gosh, I just realized, whoa, I was just having a fantasy about yeah. someone. It's pretty hot. Yeah. <laughs> So it's that, then uh, the breathing, the pausing, mm -hmm. and then exploring different kinds of touch with a specific intention, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and it can look a lot of different ways. But, you know, if you can't actually meditate and connect with someone and, uh, and share a little bit, and then you can just open up space for people to share what's happening while you're having your experience with someone. And sometimes it's going to be erotic and sometimes it's not erotic. So. And a little thing, I mean, a concern about the pause. Sometimes some of us were ashamed of a certain part of our body and we think like if sex is quick or touch is quick, you know, they're not going to be able like, oh my God, yeah, he's not feeling my cellulite, thank God, you know, like he's just passing his hands like really quickly. So we have also, you know, that kind of shame around our bodies. And I think when you pause and when you touch slowly and when you airbrush the body, you can really feel the other person's body. Mm -hmm. So how can we let go of that shame and just like say, I embrace my body and mm. nourish my body, like here's my body. I'm realizing we just forgot one of the important keys and our good friend Margot Anand would, would be very unhappy with us if we didn't mention one of the three keys is sound. It's wonderful to make sound when we're receiving touch. And those are the three keys are breath, sound, and movement. So when you're receiving touch, if you can make sound, you're giving a nonverbal communication of how you're experiencing that. So really, really crucial that we liberate ourselves. And you can just always tell your neighbor, yeah, I do some, uh, I do some healing work and sometimes I'll be making sound. And yeah. it might even sound like I'm having an orgasm, but really I'm just... I'm or just... he just touched my cellulite and I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> but, but making some sound, mm -hmm. because if you make sound, I guarantee you're going to be breathing. And usually people are not breathing deeply and fully but if you take a deep breath and go, ah, it's going to relax yourself. And if I relax, I'm in my body, I'm in the present, so there's no space for me to feel ashamed of my body. Yeah, and even if you do feel shame, you can just say, wow, I'm noticing I feel some shame around this. And then you just release that, and that builds the connection that you're really wanting, yeah. So this kind of touch, has it really make a difference in your life? Absolutely totally changed my life uh, when I went to massage school, um, when I got into yoga, when I was doing meditation, when I learned how to communicate um, in this way. Um, it's really building much deeper, more meaningful connections um, with, with people that, um, that I want to be close to. So, yeah. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much, Robert, for being here. Where can we find you in your website? Can you uh, share your information? Sure, sure. The best way to get a hold of me is www.consciousensuality.com. And you can also go to our uh, Hawaii Tantra Festival website, um, and that's hawaiitantrafestival.com. Dot com and we run that every year in Hawaii in January. Yeah, and it's amazing. His place, you have to go and check it out. It's yeah. just beautiful, like permaculture, amazing food, amazing people, sex positive, tons of dance, tons of joy. So 
if you, if you want to go to Hawaii, that's the place to go. So thank you so much, Robert, for being with us. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. It was a yeah. pleasure to be here. Yeah, and I want you to come back to another show because we need to talk about like conscious lovemaking. Okay. Woo! <laughs> so thank you, and thank you all for joining Coffee, Tea, or Sex. And remember to have it every morning and every night. Mm -hmm.